Hey, weirdos, I'm Ash. And I'm Elena. And I'm Sabrina. And this <laughs> is a special edition of Morbid. Today we are doing the Weirdo Audio Book Club. <laughs> You guys, um, this is brought to you by Audible. Our friends over there are helping us bring you this special episode, and they're giving you a little something something, because if you go over to audible.com slash weirdos, you can get a free trial on Audible, and that's really exciting. Uh, So in this special bonus episode, we're going to be talking about the title, My Best Friend's Exorcism. It was written by Grady Hendrix, so let's talk about it. Yay! Yay! I'm such a, like, woo girl right now. We're all being I love woo, that. woo girls woo right girls. now. We're whooping it up. The energy. <laughs> very <laughs> woo. <different. laughs> it is woo woo. It is. It's a bit woo woo. It is. And, and spooky. This title is something I'm really excited to talk to you guys about because it's all about like friendship. And spooky friendship. I was spooky say. ass and friendship. Demons. Yes. <laughs> Our favorite. Yay. We love it. That's how we became friends. It's true. The Literally. dark stuff. Spookies Spookies. and demons yes. and ghosties. Luckily, none of us has been demonically possessed yet. No, it's exciting. I have been around a demon. Yeah. My sister, we used to joke she was possessed, but she might have been. Maybe. Really? I also had someone one a previous relationship uh wonder if I was possessed and that's why I was leaving. Wow. Yeah. Do you feel like you were? <laughs> um, possessed with something good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> possessed with newfound strength. Yeah. To get the hell out of there. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. What a way to justify someone leaving. Mm-hmm. You're like, well, you must be possessed by a demon. If right. you're leaving me. Yeah. Obviously. Obviously. That's the only way. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we should start out first. By just gushing over Grady Hendrix. Absolutely. Is what I think. 100%. <laughs> I've never read a, Gra- a Grady Hendrix title before this, and you two have. Like, you guys are big fans, right? I had Love. seen Grady Hendrix, like, some of the films he's yes. made. Yes. Like, mm. um, Satanic Panic. Satanic Panic. Have yes. you seen that one? So yes. Funny. So good. So good. I'm a huge G- Grady Hendrix girl. I love his books. Love his writing. Love hearing him talk. Yes. Like, yeah. His interviews are some of the funniest interviews yes. you will ever read or hear. I was we, telling Elena, I don't know why, but he reminds me of Bill Nye. He has such good Interesting. Bill Nye vibes. It, it's the vibes. I, and kinda, like, you kind of want him to be your dad. Yes. And he's smart. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I get that. You get it. I yeah. get it. And he's so like, he's very insightful, but he's mm-hmm. also very unserious all the time, right. which is fun. That's I like love my, people like that. Yeah, well, we were just talking kind of a minute ago about the dedication of this yes. book, which was hilarious. Because the dedication, I feel like I need to read it. Yeah. For, so I had to write this down after I listened to the title because the dedication in this book, Sabrina had brought it up and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> we had to look up what this what meant. it was we're because like, wait, what yeah it says for amanda who knows the reasons why and there's an asterisk next to it and then underneath it says but if she doesn't i would suggest she have her attorney consult both protective orders filed against her the criminal complaint which outlines these reasons in great detail and maybe also her conscience because disclosing the whereabouts of the bodies will finally bring some kind of closure for my family so all of us were like who the fuck is Amanda and what does she know? And who the fuck did she kill? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Turns out Amanda is Grady Hendrix's wife. <laughs> and that's all in good fun. <laughs> he dedicates everything, every book to her, every title to her, and he always makes a joke. That's so, love. I love that. I loved it so much. It's the best. Yeah. I think that shows you right there what you're getting into with a Grady Hendrix book. It really yeah. does. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because with this title in particular... Uh, I wanted, it's like such a different way of going about like a possession story. It mm-hmm. is. Because we're used to, and I've never thought of it this way, but I read an interview with Grady that said, he was like, most of these stories are from the point of view of like a priest. The exorcist. His, yeah, yeah. Like having his faith tested because he's right. trying to exercise this demon. And he said, it's always some like young girl or some young woman tied to a bed right possessed by a demon and there's just this old man screaming at her right and he's like i'm kind of over that right yeah, it's been done yeah so he said he wanted to do it from the point of view of the de- is it the de- demoniac i think it's called i think you're right yeah is the person that is possessed which yeah. i love that the demoniac. Yeah, the demoniac the demoniac i think that's how you say it if it's not that's Demi- how i say it how else would you that's say how it? we say it right i feel like that's it's the like only saying way. craven 
a yes. crow raven. A you don't dem- know if it's demoniac. A, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't know if it's a crow, if it's a raven, it's a craven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. It actually, this is like the combo I kept putting in my head. It's like Pen15 met Jennifer's body. Yes. That is so funny because so many people have put like, two up against two each other. things like that together to describe this book and they all work. Like somebody right. said, what was it? Heathers and it, it's one oh, of them was, he says one. beaches meets the exorcist. That's mm-hmm. I mean, that way. And I That's think it's good, like yeah. Heathers and the exorcist. Or I think it was and, Heather, Heathers yeah. and the exorcist. All yeah. of those things work. It it's, also made me want to so badly go back and find my like 17 magazines yes, quizzes that I had yes. taken and find the answers that I would put back yes. when I was that age. It nostalgia really nostalgia bomb. Yeah. I was back asking, nostalgia. Yeah. I was asking Elena when you were listening to it, were you like answering the questions? Oh, absolutely. I love I it. I truly I went through and I found the questions and I wanted us to answer them. <laughs> we we yes. should. We yeah. were thinking that too. That's a great idea. Well I saw somebody say that they were answering them as Abby to see. Right. And they were like, it's making her look kind of unhinged. So like, is Abby the <laughs> right. problem? The whole time I was listening, I was like, it, it does suck because poor Abby is the one who now f- looks like she's crazy. Right. Yes. And nobody is listening to her whatsoever. Like one of the, one of the parts that like broke my heart the most is when she actually, and there's going to be spoilers in this just so you guys know. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of my, one of the parts that broke my heart the most was when she sits down finally with like Mr. and Mrs. Lang and starts to talk to uh, them about oh. what's going on. And she's talking to them about like some really serious yeah. stuff. Like yes. trigger warning. She's talking to them about rape. Right. And they're like, don't say that about our daughter. You did drugs with her. You're the problem. You're Get the out problem. Of our house. Yeah. We'll have you arrested and if they, you say that to anyone else. Right. You're on drugs. You're, yeah. And they tell everyone else that she's on drugs yeah yeah like they call her school and say she's on drugs and she's on scholarship Mm -hmm. right so they like purposely and that's like a big thing in this too and that's why i i like abby's mom i felt had such good like she had good advice for abby it was just like being given in the wrong way i think a lot of times or she just wasn't able to Right. Take it in when she needed to yeah because one of the things is like abby's on scholarship at this private Mm -hmm. school And Gretchen, his family is very wealthy. All her friends' families are very wealthy. And Abby's mom at one point is like, you shouldn't be hanging out with these people. Like, these wealthy people can pay themselves out of their problems. Mm -hmm. And if you're with them, we can't do that. So you'll be the scapegoat. Exactly. throw it on you. A little and foreshadowing. It's exactly what happened? <laughs> yeah. Mama knows best. And I was like, Abby's mom, mm-hmm. I know. Mary. I think her name is Mary. It is Mary. Yeah. I and think, it's like, damn. Yeah. I think that's one of the major themes in this is like the class yeah. differences between yeah. everybody. Yeah. And you see, it all became her problem. Yeah, it did. And it's but and shout out to Abby to for being the realest friend out the there. Realist that friend. exists and the most like resilient human yeah. being because. Like, the amount of time it took for her to actually break, and then even when she breaks, she's not broken. Like, yeah. she's like, all right, no, I'll go back for more. No, she's still like, yeah, I'm going to keep doing this. It's yeah. like she put up boundaries with Gretchen, mm-hmm. but then she would, like, break the boundary when it needed to be I broken. Know. Like, she was like, I was like, you, you're you okay. Oh, at the end, just, like, the beautiful friendship story. Ugh. Oh, my I God. I cried at the end. I did, too. It's emotional. Yeah, it's was beautiful. Like, it's so beautiful. That's these, she was holding her hand yeah. and, like, oh. Yeah. That, I think that is one of the most beautiful things about this title is that it yes. has every element and Grady captured one, the like nitty gritty and like the complexities of friendship, especially yes. in high school mm-hmm. and like going through that evolution in life on top of terrifying us with the exercising and the demonic possession stuff and moments like the um freaking tapeworm. Tape <laughs> <laughs> like, we'll never forget that. They'll never be but the same. But <laughs> then uh, pulling at your heartstrings. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, like, definitely. And there's no fucking love story in it, which made the love story was with the friends. And that, that love, made me happy. That. I me love that. Disturbed. I don't know. But like, no, we need more <laughs> things like that. Right. Female friendships. Yeah. It was beautiful. Exactly. And he's really, he did such a good job. Yeah. I, I've seen people say that they had no idea this was written by a man. Yeah. You, you, you would not know. Because it was like little things. Like I think we were talking about it earlier. It was like, um, you know, when, because the, the, this takes place in the 80s. So he, mm-hmm. he puts a lot of things from the 80s. Yeah. In there, like the satanic panic like of it all. Culture. Oh, yeah. 80s culture. Roller the skating. Music, roller skating. E. Like e. all these e. cool yeah. little 
And one of them is the their like gym teacher, whoever it is, talking to them about Bartles and James wine coolers. Oh my god, I love that <laughs> yes, part. that and is hilarious. They're like super sweet, and they taste so good, and they'll sneak up on you because they have lots of alcohol mm-hmm. in them. And but he's on, they're and only. And then the next talking thing you know, girls. you'll lose your precious, your precious <laughs> gift. gift. <laughs> and like that, and they keep saying it just to the girls. Like, right. This is your right. Your responsibility to not have yourself take advantage of yeah. it. Because you'll lose. And once you lose your precious gift, you won't be worth anything. And yeah. it's like, Which well, is a dumb fucking shit. idea altogether. Oh, 100%. But, and the girls are hearing this and Abby's like, I, and so she turns to, remember she turns to, to Gretchen, Gretchen and she's like, wants to say like, your precious gift. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, I wanted it to be something that we said to each other. Like right. the hefty, hefty, like, hefty. Yeah, make it a yeah. thing. And yeah. I was like, that's such like girl friendship. It like, is. It's like you latch onto this one phrase yeah. and you'll just use it forever, forever with each other and it was little things like that like nuances that he got so well you know what it is yeah he captures the religion of being a teenage girl yeah like yes. what their religion is not yes. like like the, there are themes of religion throughout with like actual like Jesus actual religion, religion yeah. but uh, aside from that and like i think the more important religion and the one that was highlighted here is the religion of your friendships yeah. with your girlfriends yeah. in high school and like yeah. girl code yes, yes. yeah and Big that's time. that's one of the things he had said i've seen him in interviews say that like regular possession stories are again about a priest and you know right. like a demon and faith being tested and he was like but it to me like in high school yeah your most important thing and you're the thing that you know grounds you and the thing that you look to for hope and whatever and faith yeah. are your friends are your and friends. your relationships and that's why like you know in the end it's not a like a religious exorcism that takes this demon out of her Nuh-uh. it's their friendship and it's their bond sl- yeah. and their love for each other exactly. it's their history and, and it is one of those that. like Phrases, catchphrases yes. almost that they use to yeah, help. Exactly. Yeah. It's like all that silly stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, the I love power you of Phil Com- Com- Collins yeah. compels you or whatever. Yes. It is. Yeah. Like, <laughs> she's like, I love you queerly and I love you yes. dearly. Yeah. Like, all of that is what takes this demon out. And I was like, that is such. It's amazing. It's such a unique way of looking at a story like yeah. this. And it's like, I would listen to this title a hundred more times. Same. The yeah. other thing is the narrator of this title. It's performed by um, Emily Wu Zeller. Yes. I like to say that she has a voice like an anti-demon. An anti-demon yes. indeed. Her voice was how, so soothing. How beautiful and ironic, but right. in the best way. Yeah. yeah. No, she did a great job. I yeah. love when she does the boy parts because she does like all the parts when yeah. you're listening to the title. And when she does the boy, she's like... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like when it's Wallace talking, but it's and like, like really well done. Yeah, yeah. like he does sound You're like, like that, that is Wallace. Fucking Wallace. <laughs> I found head. myself in certain parts because I was I just needed to know what happened. I like to listen at like 1.5 speed. Yeah, mm-hmm. but there were certain parts where I would slow it down. Yes, I needed to like just capture every sentence and every word and hear all the disturbing things yes yes, yes. And you know it's a good title when you do that right it and was you want to like really take it immerse in. yourself yeah. into it it was one of those titles where like you you want to get to the end you want to know what happens but i remember being like finished with it and i was like i don't want to be finished the post with it. Yeah. depression yes. yes and what's cool about like and grady does this really well in all of his titles um he he has such a way of like balancing comedic elements like levity yeah. moments of levity with extreme horror it's yes. not like it's like he's a little spooky over here and like this is really funny it's like yeah. no he's gonna like ruin your life in right. one chapter and then the next chapter he's gonna be like now breathe yeah and mm-hmm. it's like the and perfect yeah. balance of it. like it he's is. He's like the radio silence of writing yes. for me. Ooh. 100%. Which is, which That's is like a good way to put praise, that. everybody. That is. Because they're so good at like, you know, balancing mm-hmm. that levity in horror. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, a, it's a talent. And it's, and it's like what they do. Like that yeah. is what they're known for. And they are brilliant at it. And Grady has that talent. Yeah. Like he has that skill. He gives you that mo, And it's always that moment to just like catch your breath. Right. And that's like... That's why horror is fun. Yeah. Like, because you're, you should get that moment of like, holy right. shit, what did we just see? Or yeah. Like, what did we just hear? Because there are and moments. Then you breathe. Yeah. Because there are moments where you're like, what is happening right now? And then there are moments where you're cracking up. Like, yeah. Yeah, I was laughing out loud listening Same. to this. I looked yes. crazy in my because car. Because it, it, it almost, he has this beautiful way of almost feeling, making you feel like you are one of them. Yeah. Like, you're a part of the you're girl group. It. You're there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're one of the friends. I yeah. was saying that to Alina because it's like, I feel like a lot of times in a title you can say, 
oh, like I really resonate with that person or like I'm definitely like this person. But I feel like when I was listening to this, I wasn't an Abby. I wasn't a Gretchen. I wasn't a Glee or a Margaret. Like there were were an Ash. Yeah. And you're part of the group. group. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Or like I saw like a little piece of me in like all of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's And that's how I felt. I felt like I was just me. I was mm-hmm. just Elena in the group with them. Yeah. Like watching this all happen and yes. right. seeing it with them, getting stressed out when things were happening, worrying about the relationships in right. the group. Like, work it I'm out, like, you guys. I'm like, Margaret, stop being a bitch. Like, yeah. I was like, well, Margaret, it's fine. Margaret was a bitch from the beginning. <laughs> she, she really was. I mean, she was right from the jump. I was anti Margaret. Like, Kids of her horse party. Yeah. I don't want to, like, who wants to go to your horse party? I and then she's calling them rude. Yeah, she's yeah. super rude. Yeah, yeah. Not into And in Margaret. the end, it sounds like, she, you know, she she was what she was. She also kind of just, like, dipped. She did. Which, yeah. which makes sense. Yeah. I get it. I think after that, it's like, the fact that Gretchen and Abby were able to stay friends. And Glee even tried for a little bit. Yeah, yeah it sounds yeah. like Glee had some stuff going on. But it's, Yeah, it sounds like Glee was a wreck, which I mean, <laughs> yeah. who wouldn't be after right. that high school yeah. experience? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's traumatizing. She tried to dive off a bell tower naked while throwing fake love letters from a priest. From and what was written <laughs> across her chest? Um, she has for you written across, oh, written her, across chest. her chest in black marker. And she like jumps off naked and then yeah. the, and the guards like are trying to put the... a blanket over her. Oh. And, the, and Abby's like you know for you is bouncing all over the place oh, like, oh, oh. and this is for like a young priest at their school at their school Father and Morgan. the letters weren't even written by no. him he had no idea, he had no idea. That, yeah. honestly he's the real victim in this story yeah because he looked like a like he was doing some shady shit he lost his job and he yeah. was like i can't talk to you yeah I'm yeah like, what the hell you know what's also scary is that i think like I mean, I experienced some level of bullying, more middle school than high school, Mm -hmm. but there were people doing this shit not possessed by demons. Yeah. You know, like I, I'm in middle school. I had someone tell me that like a boy had a crush on me and he didn't. And Mm -hmm. like, it was like, it was devastating in a, you know, a fraction of what happened (laughs) in this title, but like, but it feels like everything. Yeah. At that moment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, When you're younger, everything is so much more heightened. Right. Oh yeah. Like I've told on the on the podcast before I've told the story in middle school yeah. that these girls invited me to a party and sent Ugh. me to an abandoned house. Oh my God. Nothing and, will top And that. my dad was the one dropping me off. I was like so excited. And my poor dad. Oh, <laughs> I know. Elena. Oh but he's such a real one. And he's such a real what one. What did he because do? He was I'm like, ice cream. Cause I was like, I was like, what? And he's like, let's go get ice cream. Like you can talk to me if you want to, but you don't, but have, we don't to. have to. I'm talk. like sobbing. And he's just like, let's get ice cream. And that's it. People are so yeah. mean. Yeah. Was, and they weren't even possessed by demons. Yeah. I my sister, I so, my sister's two years older and I so desperately like wanted to be her friend growing up. And one day she invited me to play with her and her friends. And they said, we're going to play school, but this school ties you up. And oh my God. they <laughs> tied me up to her bedpost and left me there oh and all God. went down into the basement <laughs> to play. That's <laughs> so mean. That's some real big sister shit. That is big sister shit. <laughs> and at that point, I mean, I, like I, we joked that she was possessed by a demon because there was one time where my dad like literally heard a demonic voice come out of her mouth like, get out. Well, like, well, actually, you just said that. Yeah. You're like, there was this there one was time this that one my dad time. heard this crazy thing. <laughs> it's a longer story, but we can get into it another day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, people can be mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People? Only the, I have a story, and it's only oh, one little thing. But on AIM, which like the meanest stuff always happened on AIM. I yeah. have oh, yeah. mean AIM stories, but one that sticks out in my head was this new boy in my school that was so cute. Was his friends were like, he wants to date you, like he's asking you out. And my mom was on the computer and was like, "Oh my god, yes, definitely," and answered the AIM for Stop. me. And I remember I got home and she was like, "Josh, like beep." asked you to be his girlfriend and I said yes for you because I know like you think he's so cute and I was like mom there's no way that's real like what have you done (gasps) oh no it was a nightmare because she (laughs) was also demonically possessed I'm pretty sure (laughs) that is some demonically possessed oh my god but it just goes to show that I think everybody in middle school and high school at some point or another acts like a demon yeah Yeah. or is the victim of a demon a demonic type of person yes Yes. Like, oh, wow. 
That's horrifying. Yeah, that was a bad one. Oh, that's so sad. I know. It was horrific. And then I had to go to school the next day and, like, and face I that. I knew that that was fake. I was messing with you. Yeah, like, ha, like, ha, tables turned. Yeah. <laughs> jokes on you. <laughs> I mean, joke's on you now, so whatever. Yeah, jokes actually, on you now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but some of the nightmare parts in the book go way beyond any of our experiences. <laughs> Truly. It's, there's some part, I mean... I think we're all thinking we should talk about the nightmare parts and then we'll talk about our favorite parts. Yeah, to like yeah. kind of like the nice palette yeah, cleanser. Yeah, yeah. The tapeworm. 100 percent Takes the cake. <laughs> the most the like visual yeah. moment, like nightmare inducing moment. In the description. And how it real. kept coming. Oh, it just kept on coming. And, and then like, the dog. Oh, the, oh dog. the dog! The dog! Oh, oh, the dog is a homie, though. The dog he is, is a homie. homie. <laughs> that is true. And all of that with the really like every time Riley showed up, the I creepy know. brother, I was so scared. Riley for everyone. Right. Me. He was the scary. I mean, I, although Riley scary, did but, allow yeah. Abby into the house despite knowing that he shouldn't have. Mm -hmm, which that's, true. that's very true. I, I think appreciate. he just didn't give a shit. And he's just yeah. sitting at the counter, like with reading Hustler, Hustler right. with peanut butter fingers. That's the part that bothered I me know. the most. That's so he had gross. peanut butter all yeah. over his hands. I was like, wash your hands. <laughs> no, I agree. And he came in the room and they said he got the peanut butter on the doorknob. And I was like, uh, oh. And then she's like, and she, we could smell the peanut butter. And I was like, for Elena, it was worse than the day. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. that. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I'm horrified. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, a tapeworm starts coming out of her mouth, and she's heaving it out, and the dog's grabbing it. And I was like, "This is the worst nightmare." I could right? What was it like? Thirty something feet. It was long. ridiculously like 20 long. The feet, longest tapeworm they'd ever seen. And yeah. then she had even more. Oh my god! Because she probably was... had all the little tapeworm eggs. Yeah, because yeah. she had. Because you're only Gretchen supposed to drink one giving shake her a day. Those crazy one shake shakes. total. Yeah. Oh, one shake ever. I and thought it was, was one a day. She no, was having total. multiple a day because they all had tapeworms in them. Yeah. And then there Ooh. was, in like a close second to that, was when Gretchen vomited out all the feathers. The oh, squirrel, the squirrel. There was feathers. like worms. That almost. was so weird. Yeah, it was, the, and it, they, the description was like pale, yeah, mm -hmm. milk, mm -hmm. and it yeah. was like with squirmy black feathers Ugh. in it, and I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> like a I lot can of, picture it. There's a lot of puke in this story because then yeah, Wallace puke. also pukes on the football field. Yeah, later yeah. on, it's a little less. And during the exorcism, there's there's there's, there's some more puke. Yeah, and that, yeah. that puke is yellow. Yeah, so it's all very it's like well bile. described. Puke. Yeah, yeah. Very. How very big did you rainbow. picture the? tapeworm like girth wise i pictured it so thick right me like, too I, like pictured, I pictured it barely being like ripping her mouth that's because i think it said <laughs> yes. at one point it was like inhumanly yeah and i know tapeworms are like traditionally like a white and like, like they're thin, very thin but i was picturing like a very bulbous like blood filled me too. yes i don't know why tapeworm i pictured white still but like so yeah. thick and when the dog was like trying to snap it and Ripped it couldn't it. Oh. oh god it was awful it made me think of The Troop by Nick Cutter. I haven't listened I to that. Which I also highly recommend as a title to listen to. Um, but forewarned. There's I a just tapeworm said that part. reminds me yeah. of it. So like, Interesting. That, but it's also a great book. But it, the wor something about worms, just tapeworms and yeah. like parasites and stuff freak me out my well, cat once had tapeworms oh really because she had fleas and like she had been eating the fleas and fleas i guess carry tapeworm eggs oh, I like even know they'll eat tapeworm even eggs and it was gross because these little like rice grains would like be coming out of her butt because oh, like the like, tapeworm would be like breaking off oh my god oh, god that's awesome. yeah so and the only way to get rid of them too is to like you know, poop yeah. them out or yeah, them she, out had, or? she had to take like a I had to give her like medicine that like killed it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then you expel it. Yeah. <laughs> but that was also the sad thing about this whole tapeworm situation is that she had a tapeworm, but her family was starving her. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were trying to starve the tapeworm because I think like I think that is like a belief that like it is possible and then you'll it'll like pass through your system. But I think they didn't realize that she had like 30 something tapeworms right. in her stomach. Oh my god. But there was a lot, it's actually crazy when you look back on the title because there was a lot of like really foul, disgusting stuff. Like when the exorcism actually takes place. Ugh. Oh, it's gnarly. The roaches. And yeah. then she like, I mean, technically it's not Gretchen, it's um, Andras. Andras. I was wondering Andres. how you pronounce his name. I don't know. Is it Andras? I added a flair because it sounds what like did you say? Andras. 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 <laughs> I like it. But like he chomps down on the roach. <sighs> oh. Oh. He's a he's a wily one. He is a wily one. Yeah, Andros was funny too at times. I okay, will wait. Say. Well, that's well, the thing is, demons like 
kind of got some sex appeal sometimes. They do. They're in their phone. That's yeah. why they get. That's why they get inside. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That's but how they. <laughs> <laughs> But also one of the one of the horrifying parts besides like all the tapeworms and like the physical, you know, like body horror mm-hmm. kind of thing was when it was like the really like chilling parts where like the birds are all slamming into the house. Ugh. That part scared the crap out of me. Yeah. Well, I haven't even told my story. Oh my god, yeah, was, yes. Well, that's a, so Andros is a he's like I guess he's known to have an owl head and a man's body. That's yeah, what the because yeah. it's a real like demon and demonology. Right. So, I'm listening to the title. I'm driving home from my hair appointment listening to the title. What time of night is this? It's like 10:30, 11 o'clock at night. I have oh, I'm even creepier. We need to like a tap. Well, I don't know if we'll be able to because I do swear a lot in it, but we <laughs> need to put the voice note up somewhere. You guys, I crap you shit you not. (laughs) I'm driving down my road about to go home and I see a fucking owl standing in the middle of my neighborhood. I've never seen an owl in my life Mm -mm. before other than like at the zoo. And what are the odds that I'm listening to this title where they're talking about an an owl demon? It's Andrus. And there's an owl. Horrifying. I, I'm never going to be over it's it. It's just Andrus being like, hey. Never going to be over it. <laughs> What's up? Yeah. Because you've asked me the question, Elena, before. Like, I think it's like a question people ask each yeah. other of like, how many owls would you have to see before you thought something was up? One. And I, oh, so correct. Yeah. And I always said one, too. I was like, I see one owl. I'm being like, What's going on? Right. I <laughs> always said two because I'm like, One owl's not that yeah. crazy. One owl is that. It is that crazy. <laughs> Especially given the fact that you're reading this title yes. at the exact time. It's 1030 at night. Yes. Yeah. No. It was. Yes. It's like right outside your home. That feels invasive. Luckily, it was like a little bit far. It was like kind of in front of our neighbor. So like shout out to them. Like, I don't know what you're going through. Yeah. But yeah. I, I will say that whole book club scene. Yes. Was really unsettling. Oh my God. Be- yeah. Yeah. Because Gretchen like dresses when she's singing up and, and starts singing and at the top of the stairs. Her. Doesn't then, she push him? Yeah, too? he yeah. slaps her and then she pushes him down the stairs. And it's Ugh. like as all the birds are slamming into the house and the owls are tearing them apart, like the pelican God. and shit. Yeah, and Gretchen's mom is drunk. Gretchen's and, mom like, is just drunk. And, and Abby's like, like, I have to go work yeah. at the yogurt shop. And, and then, then there's, there's like, another lady. There's like two ladies reciting the Lord's prayer. Yeah. I was like, this <laughs> overstimulation. Like, when I say overstimulation station, like I would be. <laughs> In I would be in orbit. Like I'd yes. be gone. Uh, yeah. I don't know how Abby didn't like I mean, eventually she does run out of there, but damn. Right. I would lose my mind. It's, it's like, horrifying. That is so scary. It, unsettling is the best way to describe yeah. that scene because there is so much happening. Yeah. And that's also early on in the story where no one even believes that it's yeah. an exorcist or a demon situation yeah and you don't even like you're not really sure yet aside from the name of the title of you know yeah you wouldn't know but you wonder if there's like a twist or something like well you're wondering if it's like um like symbolizing something else right it's like a metaphor for some kind of transformation like right when your friend is not your friend anymore yeah when you're when people which it kind of it does do both it is yeah Yeah. it's perfect for that i think it's a metaphor in a lot of different ways absolutely it is and also while we're talking about like the actual possession itself there's a lot of theories out there as to if gretchen was possessed in the woods like after they dropped lsd or if she was possessed even before that at bible camp and then it really just started to like ramp up yeah that's actually because you brought this up before we were recording and I was like, should we wait? But I because I fully believed it happened in the woods. Me too. Because in my mind, it was like they were it could have been Abby. Mm-hmm. I thought that like had Abby gotten lost. Yeah. It Jumped would have been her. Yep. Um, But that's interesting, especially given the Andy Andy Solomon. conversation thing. Like, yeah. who was she talking to? I need to go back and listen because what I saw, I, I was on like a, a couple of discussion boards, just kind of like reading what other people were theorizing. Yeah. And what they were saying was that she mentions talking to Andy like before before she gets, quote unquote, possessed in the woods, like before you're right. led to believe that she gets possessed right. in the woods. And then he says, oh, I haven't talked to her since summer camp. Right. So it's like, so I think she had to have been possessed probably at summer camp. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like a yeah, Bible that's never addressed. Because Abby even says like she's annoyed by the fact that Gretchen has this like boy, yep, that right. she met at summer camp and now prioritizes. Yep. But then at the same time, she says she's talking to Andy, 
is she calling Andres Andy like to try because obviously oh, that's it's also not interesting. Gretchen. Yeah, because that's that would make sense. You know, this yeah. also brings up a point when Abby does call the number that she thinks is Andy's. Yes, mm-hmm. and Gretchen answers. Gretchen's like soul answers. Yeah. So there's that, a part. Oh, I just got chills. That, was that part was because that confuses me a little bit. So that confused yeah. me too. But I found another fucking thing on the discussion boards because I didn't even catch this, and I wonder if you did. Elena did catch it. So when so Gretchen's soul essentially is like trapped in the phone lines because which also kind of makes you wonder was it did she get possessed out there because when she is in like that like little shack in the woods Mm -hmm. remember she sees that little like phone like what's it how would i describe it like the phone company the phone company logo oh and she hears that like buzzing like electrical buzzing yeah and it's the same buzzing that she hears when she calls that number okay so this is interesting so what if it did happen at Bible camp Mm -hmm. and then she is talking to Andres on the phone and like basically they swap places like she lets Andres into her and her soul is now like stuck in the phone line yeah I could see I I think I see what you're saying like a Bible camp if she like because one of the things that they say during the exorcism it like brother lemon which we will get into brother lemon hero of the century hero we love a brother lemon (laughs) he said during the exorcism that like you're going to be kind of like open and raw during this mm-hmm. exorcism because we're going to be like saying all these Bible verses and like all these powerful things that like, you know, using our faith and that's yeah. going to leave you open to being possessed yourself. Right. right. So what if at Bible camp, she became raw and open from oh. being exposed to all that she was exposed to there. She came back. They dropped LSD. She got lost. She went to that ex- that little cottage in the woods and some there's some kind it does of seem thing like there, there was a trigger there and that was where it entered well, and that's maybe, why you can communicate with that part and yeah. maybe it was like the phone lines because of the electricity right. yep i yeah but that's maybe it all really did begin in bible camp when she became like raw and open to it that's the thing when i was listening it was just like all most of that was just lost on me and i just yeah. assumed right. that she dropped lsd she jumped right. off and there maybe there was like some kind of portal to yeah. that right it's especially because people had used that shack for satanic rituals right and- but now i think i'm a full believer that it me happened too at bible camp me too Same. i think it all began there yeah yeah you guys have to let us know what you think like yeah like yeah, in I'm the curious. comments yeah i want to i want to see because also Should i do a poll i yeah. read that like andy's last name is solomon which is oh. referencing King Solomon. Which is hella biblical. Which in the Bible, I guess he became, like in some parts, in some thoughts, he became a powerful king through the help of demons. Like demons helped him. Grady. Oh. So See, this I, makes me love Grady even right? more. Because it's so just deep. Like, it's so smart. Yeah. He just kills it with that stuff. It's like you layered. go back yeah. and you're like, shit. Like you yeah. know what you're doing. Like it's so impressive. It is. Well, we talked about our nightmare parts, and I guess we kind of talked about some of our favorite parts, even yeah. just like through that. But let's go deeper into our favorite oh, yeah. parts. Okay. I mean, the Lemon Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> they win. <laughs> the Lemon Brothers. They win. Bodybuilding for They're, God. And that's a real thing. Yeah. Bodybuilders. What is it? It's a bodybuilders right? for Christ. For Christ. Yeah. Is a thing. I've seen it on Instagram. Yep. Bodybuilding for I Christ. I mean, you can do anything for Christ. You absolutely can. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you really think about it's it. It's a whole thing. There's a hashtag BB for Christ, number four. BBC. BB for Christ. BBFC. <laughs> BBFC. <And> <laughs> it says, Welcome to Bodybuilding for Christ, where faith and fitness unite. So they're like real. That's like really pretty much what they said. They honor God. I mean, they were fucking fit. Like, I loved the moment where it's the school assembly and they ask the, the, what's the guy's name? Wallace. Wallace. It's like, it's almost like non-memorable because F Wallace. But (laughs) but, like, they ask all the guys to come up and lift the thing and then the guy does it by himself. Brother Lemon's like, (laughs) took four of you guys. (laughs) And he does like the, he like puts it like the cross. Yeah, you had to do it in the shape of the cross. He's like, it's stronger in a cross. Yeah. The power of Christ allows me to do anything. Yeah. And they're just like, delightful like they are yeah, delightful i love them and he's right. always talking about his daddy and yeah he loves daddy his dad was the one who yeah he just loves the dad yeah were you guys ever second guessing him when he showed her like all the stuff that he had in his van for the exorcism and the ghb part like how there was like two baggies and she was like why are there two yeah. i was a little worried that mm-hmm. like it might be taking a turn and like maybe we were being led to believe that he was like 
like a helpful exorcist and really yeah. he was going to turn out to be like another demon. I kind had a of. moment of wondering if he had some nefarious intent with the van. But, but it was only did. a second. After, Same. I, yeah. honestly, just a second. I, I never doubted him because yeah. of his strength. Um, <laughs> because, of because of the power of Christ and all, I I only doubted him when the exorcism was actually happening. Yeah, yeah, and I think got, he just lost himself. In and it. later right. he says it. Yeah, he, like that's that why he, he does what he does. Yeah, yes. I don't want. I mean, should I? Can I spoil? I don't know. I mean, we yeah. spoil such a big much spoil. everything. I think so, like so, when yeah. he takes the blame. Yes. Yeah, and he says like I. He, I think he mentions how he won, like he trained for two years for like the the most muscles in the entire universe competition or whatever <laughs> it is, and he says, and he's like, and I can't remember what music I was listening that I played while I did that competition. Right. I was training for two years, but I can remember every second of me like launching salt into that girl's face, the right? boiling water, and like moment. the boiling water <gasps> that, that like. And then when he was asking for the what was it the ammonia? ammonia, I was uh, like, oh my and god, Abby she's was like, die. no, <laughs> like no, like you now you're killing her physical yeah. body yeah that got so scary that I mean, was that, a horrific part that yeah. is the scary thing about exorcisms mm-hmm. generally because and, and i think has brought up a lot of debate about how like um moral some of these exorcisms yeah. are because yeah there's like f- sometimes like four muscular people holding down like this tiny frail body and like yeah. breaking bones of people in the name of exercising a demon but like but how far? How far is too far? Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's a fine line, I would say. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And you can tell, like, he reached that point and was like, yeah. I have to go. Like, I have to go get my dad. And just the way that he uh, turns himself in. And, and he turns like, himself oh, he's in. so sweet. And then the conversation that they end up having years and years yeah. later, that was one of the most wholesome moments ever. I know. Yeah. I'm glad that they had that. They could reconnect. I'm so glad they had that. And then yeah. the other wholesome thing that absolutely just ruined me, I also cried listening to this part. Because Abby's dad the whole way through, like, you can tell she loves her dad. Like, she loves yeah. her parents, but she has a tough relationship with them. Yeah, right. And She's her distant. dad never does anything like he's very passive even very, in the yeah. meeting where the mom tells off major yeah he's like he gets a little he does snippy have a, a little funny thing in that one well, yeah, he does. What does he say when she says like uh, he's never liked you yeah and she's then, like you always kissed up and kicked down to yeah. him and she's like we never liked you and the dad says now that's not entirely true i just never thought about you long enough to develop an opinion and i was like oh but it's worse <laughs> and that's yeah. what we saw that's like worse the first part of his yeah. personality come through and i was yeah. like i think i might like this yeah. guy yeah. and then when i knew i fucking loved uh, this guy was at the end when yes. obviously like so abby and gretchen get separated because like it's this whole big court case and yeah i mean yeah. people think that abby tried to kill gretchen <laughs> yes. and yada 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 you know that whole thing yeah but you can't keep two best friends apart no. so they yeah. find a way to each other and mr lang gretchen's dad is like super pissed off about mm-hmm. it and finally abby's dad just tells him off and is like dude they're going to be friends through whatever. Like, right. if they can figure out how to pay the phone bill and if they want to write letters to each other, let them. Yeah, right. Like, like, who are we see... to keep them apart? Yeah. That yeah. Part, and he's that like, can't beautiful. you see it's tearing them up inside? Oh. Like, he says, like, I'm seeing it tear my kid up. Like, yeah. you can't do this. Because there is no love like a f- best friend. Yeah. No. Really, truly. It's true. That yeah. was one of my absolute favorite It was favorite really, parts. really Oh, I sweet. loved that. It was great. And I loved during the exorcism when Brother Lemon there... I just love like the way he's like his lines are oh, some of the funniest things. They yeah. really are. Because he's so serious about them. But he says, I'll be doing some serious blasting of prayer. <laughs> yeah. If you're not girded with the full armor of God, you might not make it through with your yeah. soul intact. Like he's such a meathead. He is. is. <laughs> but also like God meathead. <laughs> yeah. that, like it's this weird combination that you wouldn't necessarily put together. No. I'm going to do some serious blasting of prayer. <laughs> What? Absolutely incredible. <laughs> Did you catch the little true crime reference at the end? What, what? When he's wearing uh, Joey Buttafuoco pants? Oh, I, I did hear that. Remember, yeah. uh, yep. Joey Buttafuoco's mistress was the Long Island Lolita, and oh. she like uh, tried to assassinate his yeah. wife after like a year's long. I affair. didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was a little rough there. But he's wearing Grady Joey Buttafuoco pants with those, those little <laughs> Easter eggs. So good. So Corinne and I ended up talking to Chad and Carrie Hayes, who wrote the Conjuring, the first Conjuring film and like uh, House of Wax and stuff like that. They went to this town in India, and I'm forgetting the name. I think it starts with C, but it's literally a town where they perform exorcisms. Wow. Oh, shit. And they went to this town. They went up to this like church, and they're performing all these exorcisms. And the guide that they were with was like, 
either of you want to be possessed by a low level demon because a low level demon <laughs> and they're both like nah I'm good, <laughs> I'm good. but nah. like because they're just exercising demons there is this question of now what happens to the demon where do we put them right yeah. because it's 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 like a tapeworm which is also an interesting oh an thing interesting in the story oh, like where point. it needs yeah. in order to survive it needs a host it needs to feed off someone so where does Andres go? I mean, part two. Yeah, <laughs> I'm we need a second book. Already. <laughs> we do. I know. He said he doesn't do sequels. He's not a sequel oh. guy. He said he loves I've, sequels. You never okay. know. But he doesn't. He said he doesn't do them. But, but just don't call it a sequel. Don't call it a comeback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, another title yes. by Grady Hendrix, takes place in the same neighborhood. But he oh. said, this book is about the kids. That one's about the adults. Well, and so I was asking I did not Elena. And it's realize like the same universe. That. Yeah. Oh. I yeah. was asking because I wonder if the book club yeah. is the book club that That's the, Abby's mom, or sorry, Gretchen's mom was yeah. like getting drunk. So he Wait, like that is a, wild. Right. And it's a great title. That's I the nice title I'm listening one. to. Yeah. I, yeah it's you know what's interesting is one. I didn't realize that that took place in Charleston. Yeah. And I almost feel like the town of charleston plays a, such a large role in this title Definitely. Yeah, in a way it didn't in that one because it was more about the like community in the book club yeah. whereas this was i think like economics did play yes, a lot absolutely. more of a role in this title so how charleston i love the way that he that graded describes like charleston is all these like massive beautiful homes that yes. are on the outside and so old so and maintained but and the second you go inside they're like decrepit and yep. people are losing so much money trying to keep them alive. Yeah. Which is like a metaphor for all these families. Absolutely. So true. Yeah, it plays a huge role in yeah. it. Yeah. And there's even like they talk about a girl that they that there's like a rumor she got like Molly. um sacrificed by like Satanists. Yes. And in that Molly, shack, right? Yeah, in, in that shack or near that shack, like in those woods, yeah. definitely. And her name is Molly Ravenel. And if you watch Southern Charm on so Bravo, many Southern <laughs> Charm shout outs lately. I, I was gonna say we're hitting Southern Fingal. Charm all the time, and it's like the Ravenel Bridge and like the Ravenels oh, wow. are like a huge That's name a huge in name Charleston there. and in politics. It's, like for yeah, a minute, they're like a, a political family. There, like there's a Ravenel Bridge in Charleston, like all that. Can we and talk as about soon the as body? Oh, well, one the baby, but then also they oh. were saying Molly's body was buried. Like yeah, that they can, they kind of plant it. But you never go into it where Gretchen's like, we need to bear, like, we need to dig her up and give, give her, her a Christian, Christian burial. burial. Yeah. 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 I, w I am curious that if they actually went to that spot, would her body be there? I know. Well, that's, is it a rumor? Is it real? And was that Gretchen saying that or was that Andrus? Andrus trying to get Abby to go somewhere where she shouldn't have been. I think right. that was Gretchen. Yeah. Still, because I think she was still in the throes of Coming out not allowing Andrus to fully right. take over. Take over. Yep. yep. But even when she's in that period, she does say things to Abby like, he tells me things about everyone yeah. else, even you. Mm -hmm. yep. So he could have told he her He could have told her that. That's true, yeah. And still be trying to lead her out there. I feel like knowing. it was a way to lead her someplace she yeah. shouldn't have been because yeah. he specifically really wanted to destroy Abby because I think he saw her, obviously, and rightfully so as the biggest as threat. The threat. Yeah, he yeah. knew that she, he, she could be the one to, to expel him. No one loves that to That baby in the bag is like... Okay, wait, that, that can go back to one of the scariest was parts. Dark yes. as hell. The first so of all disturbing. <gasps> no, Max. Guys. Oh my god. god. Max does the good dog, dog die dot com. Yes. Yeah, good dog Max <laughs> is one of the most brutal things about this. No it's one so prepared me for that. No. I was not ready. Even I'll never Gretchen be ready. says like that's the one thing she can't get over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also the one thing that's kept them friends for as long as they yeah. were able to be is that Abby is the only one who knows that that, that wasn't, wasn't Gretchen. Gretchen. Oh, yeah. Everyone else thinks she's just a vicious she dog. Good boy, dog. Max. Good boy, Max. Good boy, Max. And he was it so dumb with the maxi pads all I stuck know. to him. I loved that dog. Good it boy, reminded Max. me of Blanche. I was just going to say, he had such Blanche vibes. Aww. And I was like, no. And he's just like breaking into the neighbor's trash. Yeah, he's just oh, living. So sad. You know, he's just living his oh. life. Oh, it broke. So Pour one out for Hard. him. Yeah, truly. Truly. That was, yeah, I think that was like the biggest yeah. That destroyed me. Yeah. 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 Whose baby was it, though? Sorry, going back to that, because I feel like I cut myself off twice there. But. It was from <laughs> that, um, when they go the, see that, like, body farm kind of place. Lab. Oh, the okay. okay. Remember the bucket full right. of them? So right. it was basically, like, a specimen. A stolen. Like, a donated um, yeah. medical specimen that okay. somebody stole okay. from Gretchen. Because there was stole. a moment, I think because it was so shocking, that I was like, 
like, did, like whose baby is yeah, this? Yeah, I was like, on? are we not going to talk about yeah. the fact that she killed a baby? <laughs> like, what's going on? Yeah, it was that. It must have been a donated specimen. Yeah, yeah. At the cadaver lab, and then they stole it. So yeah. that she was always going to be known as a baby stealer, a cadaver specimen. Baby yeah. stealer. And that was Jeez. like another thing that kept them tethered. Gretchen was the yeah. only one who knew that she didn't really she actually didn't do that. Actually. Yeah. I did love during the exorcism. There's so many great moments during the exorcism. It's such a crescendo yes. for the whole thing. Right. When it says Andrus blew an, exa- an exhausted raspberry. I, I was, was like, I lost it. I was like. Anders, you're pretty funny. Like, I was like, that's Truly. pretty good. That was another, yeah. like, out loud He's just moment. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, off. Oh, right. And then he said, and when she was like, um, when she's like, I know who you are, you're Andres, you're like the purveyor of hell or whatever yeah. you are. And he says, so you've heard of me? So fucking what? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I yeah. love like, Andres. Big deal. <laughs> yeah. I was like, shit, if you weren't like really mean, this and a demon we can hang out possessing yeah. her best friend yeah. if you weren't a demon possessing my best friend right you can hang out yeah. in you got your funny. Kid. i would love to like sit down and interview a demon yeah that would, that be, would be really cool i don't think that's possible but no a, you, a, girl, can, a girl can dream, <laughs> a girl can dream. <laughs> yeah someday <laughs> let's I, we'll do it we'll get there we'll, we'll get, get there. there we'll figure it out <laughs> yeah where there's a will where there's a way yeah you know yeah did you guys know that this has also been made into a movie? Yes. I, I wanna... really, we should do like a movie night. Oh my Absolutely. God, we should. Absolutely, we should. I just picked it for um, my screen pick. Yeah. So we should watch so it. So now we have to watch it. Yeah, yes. we have. 100%. <laughs> we must. We <laughs> do it for our spooky Halloween night. I love it. Okay, <gasps> yes. perfect. Okay, Boom. perfect. I'll host it if you guys want me to. Boom. Okay. Sounds but good. if it wasn't a movie... I have cast the entire thing, and so has Elena. Yes. The entire thing, meaning the four main girls. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the entire yeah, yeah. thing. <laughs> the, <laughs> that's it. Literally the whole plot. Yeah. <laughs> so for Abby, I did Mae Whitman. I, okay. That's great. That Which is a great one. I feel like I just, like, pretty much pictured, like, somebody like May the whole way through. Yeah. yeah. Like you were saying, I don't picture, like, famous people as the characters. Yeah. But when you go back, you're like, yeah, she Yeah, I could fit. see that. Yeah. yeah. For Gretchen, I did Anya Taylor-Joy. Love her. Because I feel I like- love her. She is like so unique looking that specifically possessed, she would scare the shit out of you. Be yeah. horrifying. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then Margaret, I did Kieran and Shipka, who plays oh, Sabrina. Yeah, Sabrina. I love that yeah. one. Because I just feel like Margaret, like, definitely had like pretty girl privilege. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I feel like Kieran is so pretty. Right. That, you know, you could see yeah. that. You could see that. I could see that. And then for Glee, I didn't, I had a hard time kind of, pay, I don't know about you guys, I had a hard time picturing Glee throughout. I think that the name was hard for me. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Like, I kept picturing the show every me time. Too. I was, me too. I was like, wait, who's Glee? And then I yeah. we had to get get back. Yeah. yeah. So I had a hard time. But every time she was brought up, I did picture somebody with, like, brown hair and, like, a, like, like a, I don't know. I just pictured, like, a Lily Collins, I think. Hmm. Okay. A very pretty Glee. Yeah, pretty yeah. Glee. Yeah. So yeah. that's my cast. I feel like they're all, like, like pretty that. girls, you know? Yeah. yeah. Just, a pr- just a group of pretty gals. Yeah. Pretty, you know, pretty <laughs> Southern Carolina girls. Yes. See, mine... I thought of Abby. I thought Maya Hawk. Like mm, I did say Maya Hawk. Maya Hawk does me. have that vibe. Yeah, yeah. like that. Especially like, her character in Stranger Things. Yeah, I could see. That's exactly being what Abby. I was thinking of. Yeah. And Gretchen, I thought I couldn't decide. And Mikey gave me one of these, and I was like, I can't decide between this now. Okay. Because I was thinking Zendaya, would which be. Didn't yeah. Grady Hendrix and say? And Gr- Grady Hendrix actually said he would cast Zendaya oh, okay. as Gretchen. Okay. And then Mikey brought up Sadie Sink from Stranger Things, yeah. Max. And I thought she would be great, too. I and could see already, either of those. I could proven. also see Sadie Sink as Glee. Yeah. Actually, that yeah. might be... That's yeah. a decent one, too. Maybe that's how it works out. Maybe that is right. how it works. So we still get her in the movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause I, then I had to go back. Because for Margaret and Glee, I was struggling. Yeah. It's it was tough, and for Margaret, I was like, "Let me go back in time, and I'm mm. gonna say Thora Birch when from like now and then days." Yes, right. Okay. You know? I mean, this is your dream cast. You this can, is my dream you cast. Can I can go back in time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it'll all work. A yeah. time machine exists yeah. in this scenario. Exactly. Because yeah. then Glee, Christina Ricci. Oh, I think it would be pretty good. Because couldn't you picture her like jumping off the bell tower? Like I could she's picture such a dramatic actress. Oh, yes. very, you know, very yeah. much so. Yeah, I think you did a really good job. Thank you. I think you did a really good job. Thank I you. I think you both did a really good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, <laughs> especially because I didn't do it. So <laughs> you both did perfect. <laughs> we'll just smash them together. I do feel like a Wallace would be mm. one of the like rap boys that are like in right now. You know? Oh, oh my yeah. god, who would he be? He would be um fucking what's his name. 
I'll choke you, but I know kill a baby. Oh, that guy. Jack. Harlow. Jack Harlow. Mm. Would be Wallace. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the whole Euphoria cast could be like cast in yes. this. I feel like Angus would make a great Wallace, Aww. even though he's so R. beautiful. R. Actually, R. no. I, actually, Wallace was too. I was gonna to be say. Angus. I think he's like a he's Riley. Too kind. <laughs> he's not. Uh, yeah. He's not. Okay. Who's brother Lemon? Who's brother Lemon? Okay. Oh, we got to think of a meathead, like a, a lovable meathead. Lemon, a lovable meathead. Oh, like a Zac Efron. Especially oh, like him yeah. from um, Zac Efron Iron now, Claw, I think yeah. would be yes, <laughs> would yeah. definitely be a brother lemon. I could see that. <laughs> yeah, I think he would. Yeah. Yes. Actually, I think Zac Efron might be that. <laughs> yeah, that might it's Zac like, Efron. It's yeah. Zac yeah. Efron. You're good at this. You see, you did, you did it. it. <laughs> he did it. To be honest, he, he did it. He, he did did it. Exact did it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. He did the work for me. <laughs> All right. So to end, let's answer the questions from the quiz. Yeah, because there's like the quizzes that appear throughout. Throughout, they have the quizzes. From like the you know the teen magazine yeah. yeah that they're reading. Do you remember the doing these? Of course, oh, I, yeah. my whole yeah. life was doing these. Yep. Yes. Okay. Should I read the first one? Yes. Are you driving away your best friend? You both swore to study for the big English test together. Suddenly, she cancels. Do you a assume she got a better offer and spend the afternoon feeling rejected? B blow it off. Sometimes these things happen. C call her and demand she tell you the real reason why. Or D, give her the silent treatment. If she won't study with you, you won't talk to her. Honestly, probably a mixture of the first and the last one. I would feel like super rejected and then give the silent treatment. Give the silent treatment. I would call and demand to know the real reason. <laughs> I knew that you were going to say that. <laughs> I would blow it off sometimes these things happen. <laughs> all right. So we all are covered yeah. there. I do think like answering them now is one thing, but like sometimes... Like, I'll answer the next one, putting myself in, like, my high school. My teenage mm. self. Yeah. 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 I think my answer would still ring true for my teenage self, even for that first one. Mm. I think my teenage self would be, like, so heartbroken. Yeah. Like, feel rejected. Yeah. That so would have been my teenage self, too. Yeah. All right. So let's answer them as our teenage selves from this point well, We should answer them as both. Yeah. Oh, there there we go. Go. <laughs> okay. All right. Second question. Your best friend says she's stressed out and needs a break, so she's canceling your plans to double date this Friday. A, what a relief. You didn't want to go either. B, this friendship is over. C, cancel your date and go to her house instead. She must need to talk. D, your poor date. Now what else are you going to talk about on Friday night? I think high school, C. I'd be like, oh my God, what's going on? She needs mm -hmm. to talk to me. And now A, because I never want to go anywhere. Same. <laughs> yeah, Same. That's, that's A would be me now because I'd be like, sweet. Also, because <laughs> you're wearing a homebody sweatshirt. Because <laughs> I'm wearing a homebody sweatshirt. <laughs> And I was going to say between C and D for teenage me. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I was likely a lot more selfish then. So I probably would have been like, oh, That's no. fair. <laughs> I guess yeah. I'm going out. See you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> going solo. <laughs> Bye. I feel like A and C would ring true for me like back then and now. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Me too. Yeah. I probably was usually the one canceling because I was always grounded for like a month for <laughs> nothing. <laughs> okay. Your bestie shows up at school on Monday sporting a brand new do that she didn't tell you about. It's radical, it's expensive, and makes her look like a poodle. <laughs> you, A, tell her it looks great. That's what friends are for. B, pretend nothing's happened. After all, if you can't say something nice, dot, dot, dot. C, burst out laughing. At least it's not you. Or D, be brutally honest. Someone's got to say it. I think probably I'd have less control in high school and burst out laughing. So C. <laughs> And then now I would do A and just feel like if I don't have anything nice to say, I don't yeah. say anything. I do think it depends also on their reaction. Like if, yeah. if if she thinks it looks great, then I would be like, yeah, it does. Or, well, actually, if, even if she said it looks horrible, I'd be like, it doesn't look that bad. <laughs> you look yeah. great. Like, it will grow out. So you just reassure her. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I'm, I tend to be brutally honest. Correct. But I don't ever want to hurt someone's feelings right. ever. And I don't like yucking someone's yum. I don't think you're brutally honest. I think you're tactfully honest. Thank you. I yeah. hope yeah. so. Because I don't like yucking someone's yum. And everyone like, needs someone a friend happy. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll tell you for real. Yeah. If you need the real shit. Yeah. Like, I right. will happily do that. And you've always but been I don't like way. to, like, bum someone out. Right. Yeah. If I don't want an answer about something, I won't ask Alina. Yeah. But if I need, like, a, a yeah. honest, like, true, true answer, I'm like, You'll yeah, tell up. me. <laughs> sometimes you, sometimes you won't ask it because you know the answer you're going to get. Exactly. And you don't she want that. Want it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, don't tell me that. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. Last one. 
Your best friend doesn't have time for you anymore. Do you, A, keep calling until she tells you why you deserve an explanation? B, respect her wishes. You don't want to be needy. C, tell everyone you rejected her first. Who does she think she is? D, refuse to accept it. This friendship is over when you say it's over. All right, so high school C. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, I didn't want to be her friend. <laughs> and then now... That's like your mom answering the <laughs> AIM. <laughs> <laughs> right. It rang true. And then now... I feel like... Be respect her wishes now, but not because I wouldn't want to be needy, just because I'd be like, all right, if you don't want to be my friend, then I don't want to be your friend. Right. You know? Oh, I, know. I would probably, I'm like a, I would probably be A. You need an answer. I'm, I need I'm an a, answer too. Like, give me, tell me, yeah. like, be, grow up, tell me what's going on yep. so that we can snip if we need to snip. That's me now. And that's me now. Especially if I did something wrong, like, yeah, I, I deserve know. to know yeah. because, like, as a human being, I want to grow. Like, if, yeah. I, if I did something to hurt you, like, please tell me. Yeah. And then, but in high, in high school slash middle school, I was such a pushover and, like, emotional that I always felt like I would have respected her wishes and not wanted mm. to be needy and then just cry in the bathroom or something. Oh. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> See? Gross. Yeah, Gross. Look at all of us. Gross. Yes. Check that out. Okay, this was so much fun. This was, it was. Awesome. I love this. Thanks for having me. Thank oh you for God, coming on. Anytime. That was amazing. Thank you to you. Yeah, yeah, seriously. And thank you to Audible for sponsoring this show. Don't forget that you can go over to audible.com slash weirdos for your free trial. And if I were you, I would use that free trial to purchase this title and devour it all in one sitting. Uh, Sabrina, tell them where they can find you. Um, you want my address? <laughs> so, Wifely, <laughs> you can find me. <laughs> uh, you can find Two Girls One Ghost wherever you listen to podcasts, and uh, on YouTube we are starting to speak to the spirits. So Ooh. if we do get possessed, I will be calling you too. Boom! Heck yeah. We'll so be there. We will absolutely be there. <laughs> For um, the exorcism? Yeah. Yeah, we'll exercise you. Great, thank I'll you. I'll bring Brother Lemon. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> let's Zach go. Zach Efron, let's go. <laughs> well, with that being said, guys, we hope you keep listening. We hope you enjoyed this, and we hope you keep it, it weird. weird. But not so weird that your best friend gets uh, possessed, and not so weird that if she does get possessed, you can't save her. Bye. Bye. Bye.